introducing Dr. Sarkar. He has sent me his 99 page CV. He has sent me several pages of his bio and I am trying to go with a very short bio. <laughs> so Dr. Sarkar, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our HEALS group. For our team, Dr. Sarkar is the uh, retired uh, cardiovascular surgeon and he is currently the chairman of the Center for Integrative Medicine and Yoga in Hampton, Virginia. He is also, after 25 years of practice as a vascular surgeon in Tidewater, Virginia, Dr. Sarkar retired from practice after suffering a heart attack and undergoing a coronary artery bypass in 2001. So Sylvia, you were mentioning about this story of stroke in your family. We have an exemplary person here on the screen who is going to share his own experience and what made him turn to have yoga be the way of life. So since then, he has developed profound interest in Ayurvedic medicine and yoga therapy devoting considerable time to the study of those ancient treatments and wellness philosophies in Virginia and as well as India. Dr. Sarkar sits on various boards, including the American Heart Association, Hampton Roads Board, and I have a pleasure of, you know, be part of that board and join the podium and the seat with him. So Dr. Sarkar, without any further ado, thank you very much for joining us. Our group is very excited to learn from your life experience and then what you have for them to help them control their blood pressure. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sunita. Thank you, the whole uh, Hills participants. Now you heard about all about healthy living. Now we will need to be your spiritual living. No? That's the end of the hills stands for. <laughs> now, as you know, we, when we talk about hypertension, from our Western medical standpoint, we have hypertension. We have all the reasons, causes. We have, you know, like and you're tensing, raining, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to what is called idiopathic hypertension. Idiopathic basically means I don't know the cause of it. But we, as a physician today, we started learning that hypertension has a, a tremendous emotional component. You know. You go to your uh, teenager's room and you look at the teenager's room, your blood pressure goes high up. When your boss screams and yells at you, your blood pressure goes high up. Looking at your mother-in-law, your blood pressure also goes high up. You know? So we know that there is an emotional component and we know that emotional component today is called your a global sympathetic tone. What is global sympathetic tone means, the word we always use is called your stress. You know, I'm in stress. What is the physiology behind stress? Physiology behind stress today is, I'm, I just want to be lit, the little, it will sound a little medical, but you will understand, is that the stress basically today we explain is called a fear of unknown. What is mean by fear of unknown? I'm sending my kid to school. I don't know what will happen. Is there a mass shooting in the school? Or they're not vaccinated in school. What will happen with the non-vaccinated people? That fear, that fear is creating, is called a fright and flight response. The fright and flight response basically is my heart rate goes up, my blood pressure goes up, my respiratory rate goes high up, my muscles starts to contract, and I'm in a state which is called adaptive response. What is adaptive response is if I don't do anything, my body will take care of it. 
our body has its own healing system and the pathway we have designed so what happens to that that emotional component affects a portion of our brain which we call a limbic system a limbic system basically we call it a emotional brain and it is beyond our what is a physicians will say call our cortex cortical area which controls our all basic movements our sensation it is beyond that it is a very common people who know about a little bit of anatomy they read all the time there's a nuclei called amygdala hippocampus hippocampus is written everywhere now in every newspaper every journal the newspaper is cited as the memory uh, hippocampus or amygdala is site of a fear hippocampus site of memory what it does it sends a signal to your area called hypothalamus so hypothalamus then starts to do what is called your homeostasis homeostasis means body is going to bring that blood pressure down the blood pressure which was created because you had a fear you had a fear of your child or fear of you were in the plane you don't know what will happen that somebody is without a mask so that hypothalamus then sends a signal to autonomic nervous system to your we call it a pituitary gland which is a master gland it's called pituitary adrenal cortex secretes a hormone called a cortisol which is a hormone of hypertension it starts increasing your sympathetic tone but essentially what happens we call parasympathetic tone comes in and whatever the blood pressure was high it is going to come down unfortunately in our life when it starts to come down we get another spike now i have oh my gosh what i'm going to cook tonight you know what i'm what will be for my uh, dinner tonight boom another goes high up before it comes down so you go to the your children's room pressure goes up again because you looked at the weather so this is called a mal adapted phenomena the adaptation doesn't take place so what happen you get a persistent rise in the blood pressure and we cannot explain any reason and we call it a idiopathic hypertension there is a lot of word about idiopathic i don't want to tell in public but i may tell it to sunita she might she might like it the word idiopathic came from we call it idiot pathologist gave you the term you know so this is a very nice way to tell i tell my pathologist friend and they they love it it was idiot pathologist gave this term called idiopathic hypertension so what happens we call it that you exercise you have a good diet you know you're eating diet and i tell you about little diet also it's not what you eat it's how you digest unless you digest the food pressure is good i'm going to talk few minutes before i start to show you the little bit of a practice what you need to do as long as you understand when you exercise exercise is called a sympathetic overdrive i'm running on my treadmill here is my exercise room i have a treadmill i'm walking i'm weight training my blood pressure is going high up my blood pressure respiratory rate is up heart rate is going high up but what happens then a parasympathetic activation comes in parasympathetic means called a calm and digest my heart rate comes down so what happen after exercise what i do i don't see how high my heart rate went up i see how fast it came down and i'm looking at the called resting pulse rate that is the indicator of the your treatment of hypertension how fast it goes down even if you put somebody on a treadmill if you do a your call a heart rate check which is called a you know cardiac stress test the moment you put your heart rate will go high up you continue then you stop it will take some time to come down but if you have properly conditioned if you have been doing it for a while what will happen when you start doing exercise it will take some long time to go high up that means your body has that adaptive capability now 
Remember, we are going to treat a hypertension, which is a 24 seven. So when you take a pills for, you take a medication for hypertension, you know what you're taking? You're taking it one, two, three, you know, nothing works then four, but you maintain a blood level. So same blood level, what you're going to maintain is that this adaptive phenomena is going to, so it will be slow rise, continue, then you stop it, there'll be rapid fall. Suddenly heart rate will come down. So when I go for my stress test, as Sunita was saying, I have 20 years back, I had open heart surgery, I've been had a triple vessel coronary bypass, but I have so-called no significant risk factor. I have no family history. I've been eating probably right things. My blood pressure is still 120 over 80. My blood sugar is 160. I don't have that much of a truncal obesity, which is called your, you know, spare, spare tire. But what caused it? What caused it because I was a vascular surgeon that I was in a constant level of your, this fright and flight response. So on the other hand, what happens when you are talking about the yoga and I have been doing it, this for over 20 years and I had a tremendous outcome. And I can tell you, I did, I, I, you know, when you don't have any way of treating your coronary artery disease, our cardiologist tells you, and which Sunita knows very well, it's aspirin, statin, beta blocker, ACE inhibitor. Four pills, you give it to prescription, take it, come back to me six months. You do some cardiac rehab, but that's also the rehab people. And these four medications became so popular throughout the whole world. They've been selling as a called a poly pill. Yeah. I don't know, Sunita, if you heard about that. Yes, they're all yes. put together in a one pill called a poly pill. Poly pill. Yep. Poly pill. And they're selling like a, your uh, candies, you know, all over the world. You know, all over the world, you don't need that much of uh, drug control like here. And when the Sunita comes from, we come from in India, poly pill has been. I mean, even the pharmacist will give it to you. Go ahead and take, anyway, what I'm trying to come and see, I took that for four or five years, but then I saw the effect. So what is the primary effect? As you know about yoga, it is a, this, since you're a spiritual living, it's a spiritual practice. What does it mean, spiritual practice? First of all, you will see yoga means, you know, the people are coming and putting their body in a, some kind of, uh, you know, the, you know, pretzel and twisting and turning, but that's really exactly not called a yoga, what a yoga comes from. Yoga, the word, original word is called, is called a Sanskrit word, which comes called a yoga, which means a union. It unites our body, mind, and spirit. So what does a body, mind, spirit means? In a computer metaphor, our body is like a hardware, mind is a software, Spirit is a programmer. So what does it mean? Spirit means the, your soul. Soul is means the self. Self is the, the I. So I am going to program my software. When I'm going to program my software, my hardware will get fixed. If my software has a bug, nothing is going to be fixed. As much, so what happened for hypertension, you go to a doctor, they give you one medication. Yes, he took the diuretics, it's good. Then he took a mixture with another one, good. Six months, it doesn't go down again. He put a two, three, four medications. And the, 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 the reason is that the mind over body, which you started understanding is very important. So the union of the body and mind is that your body is connected through your mind with certain things. What is certain thing? Is the breath. Breath is the connected between your body and mind. Metaphorically, if, the, if you're flying a kite, if your body is like the roller, and if the kite is your mind, that the thread which connects is called your breath. So in a practice of yoga, actually yoga was the original Sanskrit word. It was not the Americans. Americans can pronounce any word. It's the Europeans who could not pronounce. So they put a little a yoga for their, it's just for their proper way of 
you know, pronounce it, but it's okay. I also say yoga in, in this public. It is actually a philosophy. It is a philosophy which is called small aphorisms, 196 aphorisms. And interestingly, out of 190, 193 is to quiet down your mind. It's called, you know, the whole component of, we call it a meditation. Then there is a practice which is called the eight limb practice. In the eight limb practice, there is a first limb which is called a social restraint. Second limb is a personal restraint. Third limb is called a poses, the one you see all the time. Fourth limb is called a breathing practice. It's called a voluntary control of breathing. And the name is called pranayama. Prana is a life force. Prana is the energy which keeps us awake and alive. And yama is a control and restraint. Fifth one is a control of your senses. Sixth one is a focus. Seventh one is called meditation. That means when you start practicing your this, we call it the poses, called asanas, with the proper breathing, you literally enter into your mind for your meditation. And last stage is called the union of your body, mind, and spirit. Now, remember one thing, that the breath is the creator of this relaxation response and parasympathetic activation. So when you use yoga as a therapeutic purposes, we're using the component of like calm and digest, relaxation, and I'm going to show it to you how to do the relaxation. That's number one. Number two, what it is, the hypertension is primarily due to tightness of the blood vessels. It's called the peripheral resistance. I know you've been in the study group, you should understand it very well, that when the blood vessel opens up, relaxes, that pressure drops called peripheral resistance and in effect of blood pressure drops. For the heart, we call the use, call the word afterload. Afterload means heart has to pump very hard because the Tubes which have to go the blood, the tubes are tight. When they relax, heart doesn't have to pump that hard. That is called reduction of the afterload. But the most important component is what you are in called a spiritual living. And people all ask me what a spiritual living is. Now let me tell you about spiritual living. And you'll have a, you know, you'll have a, your, your mind will blow up when I will explain to you what spirituality means. You know, we talk about spirituality is a holistic, you know, it's a holistic practice. I say holistic doesn't mean so I'm going to the church or I'm going to the temple. Holistic means it's a whole. It's a, with somebody who dropped the W. When I go there in the church, I talk to you, I'm in a group, I'm fine. The word spirit, spirituality, spirit, the true Latin word comes from the word called spiritus. Spiritus, basically, the Latin word means your breath. I am connected with you through my breath. And whatever I am breathing out, you know, the plants, trees are helping me to taking out the carbon dioxide, but you are also taking some part of me. So I make a, always make a joke. All my organs in my body, my liver, kidney, spleen, everything, the cells are dying. It's called apoptosis. And when they die, they, they secrete a, your, we call it a, some gaseous form which comes out through your outbreath. So you said today, by analyzing your outbreath, we can diagnose almost 400 diseases. So you are my next door neighbor. I'm breathing out and you're breathing in what I'm breathing out. So essentially at the end of the day, you are getting part of my liver, part of my kidney, part of my stomach going breathing out and going in to you. That's a spiritual connection because you have to remember, you know, Sunita will understand very well, our pulmonary function test, we call a spirometry, because that's the word comes from. So physiologically what we have seen that when we hold a pose, 
which is called asana, muscle contracts. We are not going to push ourselves. I'm going to show it to you. We are not going to push ourselves. We start where we are. We'll be going to starting a practice without any pain. If you create any pain, you are creating an imbalance in your practice. There is no competition. You may go to yoga class, you can see it, but you have to listen to your body signal. And most important body signal is your breath. What happens to you when you start, even to a practice, if you keep on walking on a treadmill or walking a little faster walking, you'll see slowly and slowly your breath, you won't be able to do any more effort in breathing. Effort in breathing is not healing. Effort in breathing, when you have a huffing and puffing in your breath, that is good to build your stamina, good your resistance when you're young, but when you're healing, you need to have a completely effortless breath. Same thing will happen to me if I've been sitting in a chair and I keep twisting myself slowly as I come to a spot, my breathing, I will feel it, and my breathing has an effort. I will back off. So we find it out that our lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. It needs 1.5 liter to keep it open and is a 4.5 liter is called a vital capacity. We can breathe in and out. Normally the breathing called a tidal volume, we breathe only 500 cc, like half a liter. That means our lung has the 80 to 90% reserve. So we teach you how to breathe out first. See, my lung is already full with all the carbon dioxide, all the gas. Here I'm taking a deep breath in. It's sitting in the top of all the toxic gases and they're not doing anything. So I'll tell you how to breathe out first. Slowly you will take a deep breath in. Then you slowly are going to breathe out. Breathing out longer than breathing in. What does it mean? For a hypertension, a breathing in is called sympathetic. Breathing in is called a fright and flight response. Breathing out is called parasympathetic, which is called calm and digest. So all of our digestive tract is really supplied by called parasympathetic nerve. That's a parasympathetic is called calm and digest. You might heard about it's called a vagus nerve, called a vagal tone. It's increasing in the vagal tone. For all the things we talk about digestion, healthy eating. Yes, you can eat all as many fruits, as many vegetables, as many, you know, the uh, gluten-free, yeah, this free, this free. But that food has to be digested. You know, you know we, what we call, you are what you eat. Yoga says, no, you are what you digest. The digestion process is all parasympathetic. From mouth to up to renal canal, everything is supplied by parasympathetic nerve. Unless you have parasympathetic activation, your food is not going to be digested properly. And undigested food, shows up in your body, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, high uric acid. Yoga says, you know, you have a diabetes? Very simple. Body cannot digest your sugar. You increase your digestive fire. It is called a digestive fire. So now let me show you what you are going to do. And I'm going to show you a few things, which you'll be doing it. And I can tell you, if you continue doing it as a daily practice, it will be a money back guarantee. The blood pressure is going to come down. Why? You taking a pill every day. This is going to be also lifestyle. First component of a practice of yoga is you sit down wherever you can. Sit down in a chair, perfect. But you keep your spine straight. So if you sit down in a chair, you sit down in a chair, go all the way to the back, keep your spine straight. Why? My skeleton, if you let it go, my skeleton will fall in the front. 
I have two muscles in the back. It's called paraspinal muscle. It's contracting, keeping my spine straight. And I feel two stones sitting on the back of my spine. The moment I keep my spine straight, my muscles get a relief and slowly and slowly relaxation starts in and I can feel like a two pillows sitting here instead of two stones. So if you're sitting in a chair with the back, it's great, sit down. You sit down all the way to the back, keep your spine straight. Now, let me show it to you. If you're all of you are looking at me, let me show you something which will also blow up your mind. I've been doing it all my time. There is a chair called a kneeling chair. I have all the chairs in my office as a kneeling chair. Let me show you this chair. If you understand what I'm talking about, this is called a kneeling chair. I sit in front of the computer like this. I will sit down with my knees here. I'll keep my body and here is my keyboard. Here is my monitor. People all talk about when you sit down in a chair and looks at the monitor, your blood pressure goes high up. Sitting kills, moving hills. So I said, you have to sit down. You have to do a computer, but do like this. If you don't have the chair, very simple. How to, can you, can you see my this chair? Beautiful, well, a kneeling chair. Sunita, you have seen it? You have not seen it? Okay, I can tell you another fancy, fancy chair. Let me show you. Have all these chairs, this is, a, this is a fancy living chair. It has a back, it has front, but same, same concept. You sit down as a kneeling with your spine straight. Once you keep your spine straight, all the time, it doesn't, doesn't matter where you are and what you're doing. <laughs> you are eating your food, keep your spine straight. Driving your car, sit down, put your car in the back to the point that you are driving with the spine straight. The so moment far. you keep your spine straight, you will see a whole body relaxation will set in. A, a now, quick question, uh, Dr. Sarkar. Sure. A quick question. So what is, how important it is to have the back support on the yes. chair? One the thing is that, <clears throat> And initially, what will happen to you if you give your back straight in a short time, you'll feel a little discomfort because you're not used to it. It is called our neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity means it's a habit forming. You keep doing the same thing repeatedly with the 20, 30, 40 inputs, brain knows, and I'll show it to you my brain will allow me how to do it. So in a back support, you can do it initially. So what I tell people, instead of back support, you take a folded blanket, put a folded blanket, put it behind you. And when you feel a little discomfort, you put the folded blanket in to get the comfort. And in a short time, you'll see, you'll be getting into the next stages when you can take the layer off and do it slowly. And for me, I am, you know, always, I'm sitting, I'm, even I'm standing, when I'll be standing up. So if I'm standing up in the morning, if you can see me, this is my, I will be standing like, if you can see me on the back, on my back, head, my hand, it is, I'm straight, it's called a tree balls. Uh, my whole, my whole spine, and also just for your observation, if you see a person, ninety years, hundred years, young, we don't get old anymore. Young, they will have a straight spine. A hunchback of Notre Dame doesn't live too long, because it is your breath. Breath is the most important thing. So now, why the breath is so important? First, if you see. Say somebody's dying. What happened? We say expired. That means last breath comes out. Lung stops. Then what happened? Heart stops. When the heart stops, 
then the brain stops. When the brain stops, all the cellular function stops. So we come as a physician, we come, look at your body temperature, look at your pulse, for the whole cellular function stops, we say person is dead. So if I improve my lung function, it improves my heart function, improves my brain function, improves my cellular function. So by able to improve my breathing, I'm going to improve the insulin output from the beta cells of pancreas, which will be helpful for people with diabetes. So it's a very simple phenomena that you have to learn two things at the beginning, how to keep your spine straight and to learn breathing out longer than breathing in. Second, you will see that your whole breathing is called, who called the uh, muscles of respiration. Muscles of respiration are called skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are trainable. What is trainable means here I am, I'm doing a, a say in, in a muscle, you know, a, a arm, arm curl, I'm looking at five pounds. After two weeks, I can do seven pounds. After one, one month, I can do a 10 pounds. I can do 15 pounds after two months. Same way I'm the breathing. I can do breathing out. Say count of four out, count of two in. In a short time, I'll be able to do a count of three in, count of six out, count of four in, count of eight out. We've been doing it so long, we can do easily do count of 10 in, count of 20 out. And I'll show it to you. You will understand the moment you create that parasympathetic activation, the blood pressure is going to come down. Second, if you look at a baby, even an infant, Every posture the infant has is a yoga. Infant will get up into a, call a cobra pose. They'll get up with the call a downward facing dog. They'll be sitting, it's called your spinal twist. Just an interesting thing. If you ever seen a baby, baby will get up or baby will sleep with the feet together. It's called a closed angle pose. Yesterday, I have a to, I mean, I have a, two grandkids, they always send me the kids that are in a, you know, uh, uh, your yoga pose. But this is not a, you won't be able to see it that well. But anyway, it is in a, he, he's less than two years. My son was monitoring him and he was monitoring him. This is for a monitor. His two hands are both sides. His legs are on one side. Uh, this, is, this is called your spinal twist. They put the hands on both sides and turn the legs on the other side. It is natural they do it. So what we do first, you are going to start with a hand gesture. What is hand gesture? These are in yoga, the name is called mudra. The reason is in yoga, as I said, connecting your body and mind was connecting you, your breath. Another connector is your hand. Why? When you think, think about this, when you think, before you can say something, your hand moves. Like here, I eat something good. I will tell you this, I will tell you Sunita, Without saying it is good, hand will move faster than my tongue. If I want something, I'll do this before I say give me. So for the hand, if you say baby, now say how many of you are observant? Babies are completely relaxed. If you see a baby sleeping, they call it call abdominal breathing. They're so relaxed, you'll see when they're, when they're sleeping and they're breathing in, the stomach wall will go high up, coming the stomach will come down. Then you'll see the hand, call a baby fist. Have you ever seen how a baby closes their fist? Lack of observation, huh? We close our fist like this. Baby always closes fist like this. So that they have seen this. 
This is called actually in Sanskrit, called a baby fist. And it's a relaxation, like pain, pain in your hand. Pain in your hand is what well, we call it arthritis. We call it uh, all the inflammation, degenerative disease. My bone is gone, my cartilage. That is on the pain. Cartilage doesn't have a pain fiber. Even bone itself doesn't have any pain fiber. Our body splints. Ligaments, muscle tightens up, which causes pain. So anybody has a hand pain. I'll do this throughout the 24 seven. People with hypertension, you will be doing, say, if you want to practice with me, you can sit down, put your hands in front. You can do very simply, breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Breathing out, you do the baby fist. Breathe in, breathe out. This looks very simple to you, but you'll be surprised how much a physiological effect it has. In fact, your breath will get better and better and better. And I'm going to show it to you. Okay, from here, Let's see one thing, you're sitting down, you want to expand your chest and you want to relax the muscles of respiration. So concept, when you want to use your muscle relaxation, you want to start where they are. So I'm going to show you a posture which is called a prayer pose to the back, river, reverse prayer pose. Suppose, see, you are doing a, a pose, you are putting a hand in front of you. I will go ahead and put my hand to the back and for you, wherever you can. There is no hard and fast rule because you are not competing with anybody. Okay, so let me see. You, you, let me see if I can show it to you and you can do it slowly with me. Can you see my back now? Yes. You can do the, okay, you can see my back. If you can see, uh, Sunita, let me know. So you are here. If you are here, stay here, keep your spine straight, do some breathing out longer than breathing in. Within a few weeks, you'll be like this. In a short time, you will be in a skull, oh my God, what can I do? Look at that. Within a short time when you're doing, you'll be going high up a little bit more. If you stay here a little longer, with your eyes closed, spine straight, breathing out longer than breathing in, it will go, keep on going high up more. But one thing is very important, if I can stay here without creating any pain, we're not competing. You only do where you can do it and where you can do it. The muscle will start to relax. Muscle cannot stay contracted too long. So when I am like this, I'm in a profound level of relaxation response. There's a lot of name in this asana pose. First is called a beginning. Then it's called your stability for relaxation. Now let me tell you what I'm going to do. I keep it like this as long as I feel my level of comfort. If I have a level of comfort, I let it go. Initially, it could be only 30 seconds. Could be even five seconds. Whatever it is, I said you start from somewhere. It is not the poses or asanas you're going to master. You are using the asanas in stages for its therapeutic benefit. Biggest people to have hypertension today is the, your IT worker. This computer guys, they're sitting in front of the computer, the hunchback looking at this computer. I tell them within a short time, they put a, they put a nice thing, call it away from the keyboard. You put down what away from keyboard, put your hands in the back. Now, 
Let me show you what is really therapy for hypertension. Here I am. I'm in a profound level of relaxation. And what I do, I do all this with my monitor. I have an Apple Watch and I have a Fitbit. So I look at all my heart rate, blood pressure, it is you when I'm doing. Now I keep my spine straight. Then when I close my eyes, I enter into a state of little bit of a mental relaxation. And let me show you the technique of my breath, which is going to lower my blood pressure. First, I'm going to breathe out first. Very simply, you try with me, breathe out first. Breathe in with a count of two in, one and two in. Breathe out with a count of four out. One and two and a three and a four. Try one more time. Breathe in with a count of two in. Breathe out with a count of four out. Keep doing it for a short time. You will develop what is called a habit forming what you call a neuroplasticity. Now, you don't have to do with me. I'm going to show it to you and show it to you the how it affects your heart, cardiovascular system, and your high blood pressure. Now I'm going to do, show it to you. I'm going to breathe in, count of four in, count of eight out. If any of you can do it, even count of three in, count of six out, be my guest. Otherwise you stay count of two in, count of four. My hands are in the back. Look at my hands in the, still in the back, same, same in the prayer pose. And I'm in a profound level of relaxation. Example being, Sunita will understand what I'm going to show it to you just now. I have a saliva in my mouth. My mouth is very wet now. I've been talking to you for the last 45 minutes and this is called parasympathetic activation. My glands called salivary glands, it secretes, here in my tongue, my mouth is still completely wet. When you have a fearful, when you're stressed, mouth becomes dry. Right. I'm breathing out first. I'll be doing count of four in, count of eight out. My eyes are closed, spine is straight. And I just want to show it to you how we have done it and how we have overcome this sympathetic overdrive in our daily lifestyle. I breathe out first. Count of four in. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> count of eight out. I'm completely effortless. What the effortless means, I can breathe normally. I can even talk, I can even sing. See, here I am, my hand is in the back. I'm talking to you. My mouth has a saliva and it is exactly doing what a beta blocker will do for me and ACE inhibitor will do for me. Now let me show it to you. I can do count of six in, count of 12 out. I'm breathing out first. Count of six in. Count of 12 out. I'm smiling, I have a saliva in my mouth, I'm talking, I'm even singing. Absolutely, there is no effort on me. So finally, I have to show off to you. Huh? So let me do it, count of 18, a count of 16 out. And always remember, 
This is the way your respiratory rate comes down. Normally, we breathe about 15 to 16 breaths per, per minute. If you can even do count of two in, count of four out, the breath becomes six seconds, it becomes a rate that drops down to 10. If you can do four in, eight out, it will drop down to five. And I breathe very slowly. And my all is, I, when I'm sleeping, my wife will tell me, your exhal exhalation is longer than inhalation. So here it is. I'm breathing out first. Count of eight in. Count of 16 out. So when I'm doing it and I'm smiling because one of the, actually I teach to the physicians. I do a continuing medical education. A physician comes to me and said, you know what? If your patients are got all cured, what will happen to us? No, we don't have any more patients left. So I told him one and he really got it. I said, you know what? A happy patient will send you 10 more patients. There is no end of patient in this world. Only thing is that the relationship is not good enough. So happy patient will send you 10 patients. Please help the patient to be healthy. Remember, health is defined. Health is defined as a balance of your body, mind, and spirit. So always practice balancing. So for me to be healthy, what I have done at the beginning, that I do all the time, I'm right-handed, right-footed. I'm always using my right side. That is my using only my left side of my brain, which is the analytical brain. Right side of the brain, we call it intuitive brain. So I first started using my left hand. I started brushing my left hand. Guess what? When I hold my brush, the brush is all over like me. By the time I bring the brush to my teeth and I can brush it, my right hand doing it is like that. Because my brain thinks I need my other hand. Slowly and slowly now, I use all my left side. And also what I do in all my practice, what I'll be doing, I'll be doing in the practice here in the standing. So I will be on my right-handed, right-footed, see if I can stand on my left foot. Can I'm standing on my left foot. And if in the beginning when I could not do it, I will be supporting my hand, the left hand is slowly let it. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 40 seconds is great. But the time you can do it, if you can do the eyes closed, your blood pressure will start to come down. I can see very much in my Apple Watch. So I balance, I practice by balancing poses. I do my spine straight. I do all my relaxation response. And if you can look at me, Anything you can ask me to do, I'll be able to do it. I can touch my hand. And also what happens, it is your introspection, my looking inside yourself. Today, I cannot touch my toe. So I can stand here, close my eyes, do my breathing out longer than breathing in. My body will start to come down like this. Stay here. Three more waves, body will come like this. Slowly and slowly, my head will come, it will touch my knee. So what happens when I touch my toes now, suddenly my mind says, you know what? I could not touch my toes. Today I can touch my toes. You know what? Let me see what I'm eating. Let me see what is my sleep pattern. Let me see what is my uh, elimination. You know, if you look at a healthy baby, you know what healthy baby does? Eat, poop, and sleep. 
If the baby doesn't eat properly, if he doesn't sleep properly, the poop properly, baby is sick. A people like us, strong digestion, easy elimination, good night's sleep. So what happens, we find out the whole hypertension is from that area of the brain called emotional brain, which primarily activates today is a two component called insomnia and a sleep apnea. Insomnia and a sleep apnea, you cannot sleep at night, almost 35% of the US population have insomnia. I just tell them, sleep like a baby. Look at how the baby sleeps, follow your breath. Insomnia, even the sleep apnea, primary effect of sleep apnea is for tranquil obesity. And I'm going to finish it now so I can have a question to answer, but let me tell you what, how, what, what happens. The stress itself will create, it's called a trunkal obesity. This trunkal obesity essentially starts a cascade of phenomena called high blood pressure, diabetes, blockage in the heart arteries, and it ends up with a phenomena called a metabolic syndrome. So hypertension is not alone. Today have a hypertension, tomorrow you'll have a diabetes, today have a diabetes, tomorrow you'll have a heart disease. And as long as you keep yourself spine straight, breathing out longer than breathing in, whole body in a relaxation response, be like a baby, close your fist like a baby, move your body like a baby, your blood pressure is going to come down. So I think we're coming to the end of our time. I think Amanda is here, Sunita is here. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. And I do teach the class. I was teaching the class for all the physicians here in town and healthcare providers before pandemic. But after pandemic, I'm totally on a now virtual. I teach all over the world, maybe any countries, any place all over the country. But I have not done a personal. So I'd love to visit all of you guys someday. So I leave the floor open for the next five, 10 minutes. If you have any question, I'll be glad to answer. Or I want, yeah, Sunita is I think, on the phone, but you know, you will be, when she finishes, we can, is Amanda here? Amanda can take over or anybody who have any question, you can ask the question. You have to mute, you have to unmute yourself. I leave it up to you. Anybody? Any comments? Anybody has any? Anybody understood what spiritual spiritual living means? Spiritual living means really a believing. Actually, more important in spirituality is a belief. The once you have a belief, actually that that fear of unknown goes away. You came here because you believe that your blood pressure is going to be taken care of. Okay, I'm here. If any, any comments, any questions? Yes, somebody raise their hand. Can you unmute yourself first? Healthy living service, that is it Amanda or no? Unmute yourself first before you, I, can, I cannot hear you. Go to the bottom, bottom of the screen. There's a microphone to click the microphone to unmute. Bottom of the screen, there's a microphone. You can see it? Bottom of the screen on the left side, all the way to the left. There's a mute button. The host cannot do it. You have to do it yourself. It's still muted. Wow, is it that difficult? You don't see the microphone on the left side? 
So somebody somebody did unmuted at the beginning. Lower left hand corner. No luck. Lower, lower left hand corner. Okay, Sunita, we just finished. We left left the whole floor open. Somebody has a question and they're trying to unmute. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sarkar. And I'm sorry, I, I had this urgent call that was, that's a, that's I had to pick up. That's a part of life, don't worry. What, while they are kind of looking at the microphone, let me first thank you for such a wonderful session. Okay. I, I thought I do, I do yoga at least five days a week, but what you have taught, I must admit, I have, I have not been doing properly. So I will do these exercises. Um, these were just fantastic and eye opener. And I believe all my participants and my research team will agree with me that these were simple exercises and very, very easily can be done, if not every day, at least five days a week. Because you were, you were, you have a, you have an analytical brain. He said, if one okay. is, one is better, if one is good, 10 is better. So push, push myself. Pushing, pushing does not cause healing. Healing Correct. is done to let go, surrender. In fact, spirituality, what spirituality means, believing in a power above me and surrendering. I surrender. I Correct. surrender to Sunita. You take care of me. You are my doctor. Yes. I, what type of problem on unmuting? What, what is wrong? Yes. It's a lower, so left think, hand, lower left hand side, there is a sign of microphone. You yes, can find this that. is strange. Uh, yeah. and Amanda is saying that they have a question. Amanda, yeah. can you write those questions on yeah, the now, chat? Now they're unmuted. Now I say unmuted now. No, muted again. Uh oh. Anyway, Amanda can write a question and Sunita can. Yes, read I will read it me. for you. Okay. Amanda, go ahead. You can either write it on the chat or just call me on my cell and I will uh, give that question to Dr. Sarkar. Yeah, they're unmuted now, I can see. Connected to audio. Healthy Living Center is connected to audio. Yeah, they can yes. speak up now. Go ahead and say something. If not, as I said, keep doing this simple, simple relaxation response and as i said like a walmart concert money back guarantee huh <laughs> right, right. money back guarantee <laughs> that is true and i have a book i have a book i have a you know youtube channel you can go to my youtube channel Hello? i have plenty of yoga therapy for hypertension Hello? yes amanda actually amanda we can hear you go ahead <laughs> So we have a question here. Go ahead. Tell him to mute. <laughs> All you guys can join Saturday morning at 9.30. I do it through Facebook Live. If you can join through the Facebook Live or you can go to my YouTube channel. You have all of them. Everything about hypertension, yoga therapy for hypertension is there. That's fantastic. Amanda, you can what call is me, you can call me or email it to me of your questions. I'll be glad to answer. Yeah. Amanda, what was the question? Were you able to? No, they're muted again. Yeah, something, something is not wrong there. Anyway. So in any case, Dr. Sarkar, maybe we will send you those questions on sure. via email. Thank you once again for coming to our session and teaching us such a wonderful relaxation yoga exercises. We greatly appreciate. Everybody, so, just a round of applause for Dr. Uh, Dr. Sarkar. So only thing I can, I want you to translate in English for the whole audience. It's called Karo Yoga Rahani Rog. Huh? Yes. Karo Yoga Rahani Yoga. Yeah. Do yoga and stay disease-free and healthy. 
Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Bye -bye. Thank you, Dr. Sarkar. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.